Welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. My name is Mike Riley. I'm the founder and editor of the Journalist Toolbox. And today we're going to talk about one of my favorite tools, datawrapper.de. Um, this is a great tool for building charts and interactive maps uh, that you can take and share and embed pretty quickly using only a spreadsheet. Uh, there's a free version of the tool. It covers almost all of your needs. Uh, the pro versions can get quite expensive, um, but you can always look into those models uh, if you want to. Um, uh, you can also export images uh, from uh, datawrapper.de uh, and uh, use uh, them for a print uh, product. Uh, they have pretty high quality resolution ever since 2019. They made some changes to the tool. Um, it allows you to build uh, Chloropleth maps, uh, 3D maps as well. Um, very similar to Google Flourish if you've used that before. Um, their free version is very close to this. Um, you can find more uh, data viz tools on journalisttoolbox.org. Uh, and if you go into Journalist Toolbox uh, and there's a data journalism page in our little browser topics over here. Uh, we also have a daily or a, a daily, a twice monthly newsletter uh, that you can uh, subscribe to that shares a lot of data viz tools. Um, and right up here at the top of our data journalism uh, section, we have you know, mapping, scraping is charts and infographics. And if you open that page, you'll find many tools in here for building graphics, among them Data Wrapper, Google Flourish, and so on. Um, a lot of training videos on how to use these tools, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, the tool again uh, that we're gonna work with uh, is datawrapper.de. Uh, so hit pause and maybe take a second to set up a free datawrapper.de account. Uh, also, take a second to download the practice data, uh, this bit.ly link, if you click on it and open it up, you'll see that it gives you a data set of Illinois COVID cases broken down by race. Um, and it goes from the 6th of March all the way through the end of May. Uh, and it's a data set that we're going to take and put into Data Wrapper uh, so we can see how it uh, builds out and we can uh, visualize the data. The download button's up here in the upper right. Uh, just download it to your desktop or to your uh, downloads folder, wherever you can find it. Hit pause for a second, and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, welcome back everybody. Um, we are going to uh, play around Data Wrapper here in just a second. Once you've logged into Data Wrapper, you'll see new chart, new map, new table. Um, so you can create a table of your data convert it into a couple different types of maps or create a basic graphic with it. Um, my charts over here on the right is a listing of all the charts that you've created in the past. So you can go back and open them up and edit them. Uh, you can re-export them and they'll auto update wherever you have them embedded. So if you made a typo or an error, you can go back and fix a chart and then re-export it. The river up here is examples of other graphics that uh, other journalists and developers and designers have built. Um, it's a great place to go for story ideas. There are graphics here from all over the world. They've got, some, especially have some really nice maps in here. Uh, they do some exceptional mapping work. So you can go through the river and open up these and, and take a look at them. Well, what can you do with Data Wrapper? You can uh, build a, a line, bar chart um, like you've, they've done here. This is uh, positive COVID cases, uh, hospitalizations, and total numbers of test results by state. Um, this is a project that uh, some of my students uh, at University of Illinois at Chicago pulled together. This was back in April. Uh, so New York obviously had very high numbers then. Uh, and they had one spreadsheet with three different tabs in it. And they were able to load that into Data Wrapper and boom, 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 you've got three tabs on your uh, chart, which is really nice. This is a basic chloroplast map. Um, these are COVID-19 cases, confirmed cases by county uh, in Illinois. Uh, it shows some of those that have been hardest hit up here, you know, Cook County, where Chicago is, had uh, a lot of them. You know, uh, we had uh, Lake County and some of these will around the, the, the city that had uh, several as well. But also some, you know, downstate, you know, smaller numbers. Um, you can see the scale here. Um, and a uh, real nice chloropleth map. You can add share buttons to it. Uh, many adjustments in here as well. We'll do mapping in another video, but I just wanted to show you what you're capable of building. 3D maps. Um, you can layer in little shape files here if you want to show maybe the route of the Chicago Marathon uh, through downtown Chicago. Uh, you can do that here with the 3D buildings. You can also uh, annotate uh, different locations and buildings here. Use different types of icons. I use the heart there for the Willis Tower. 
which we in Chicago still call the Sears Tower. Um, COVID uh, data that we're using today, we pulled it off the city of Chicago's data portal. It comes from the Chicago Department of Public Health, which we'll credit. Uh, always save the links to the data sets that you use in, in Data Wrapper or really any visualization tool uh, because you can link off to it uh, and uh, out of your graphic, uh, which is great for transparency and helping others better understand your chart. So we're going to create a graphic using that uh, uh, Illinois COVID positive cases uh, by race data set, that spreadsheet. So go ahead and hit the new chart button here at the top. And it gives you options to upload your data in different types of formats. You can cut and paste the data in here, which I've had kind of mixed results with. Sometimes it'll lock up the data. Upload, which is what we're going to do, where you can actually take and upload it off your desktop. If you have it as a Google Sheet already, and maybe you've uh, pulled it off the web and it's in your Google Drive and you've made it public, you can import it from a Google Sheet or link to an external data set. That can be a little dangerous if somebody takes that data set down, it'll break your graphic. Um, also, if there, there's a problem with that data set, it can, can lead to issues. But maybe if you're trying to you know, uh, link to a data set that's being regularly updated off of the Board of Elections or your Secretary of State's page during the elections, this could be a good option for you. Um, so this uh, upload button right here, there are sample data sets down here that you can practice with if you want to, but we're going to show you how the tool works. So hit the upload button here and go out and grab your data set. It takes CSV files, XLSX, Excel, or comma-separated values, and it will upload your data set. It always gives you the option where you can check it here before you actually go in and start designing your graphic. If it gives you a red cell there, that means it's uh, you know either been blank or maybe there's a formatting error. Um, don't worry too much about the date format here. Uh, it'll give you options to adjust that as you go. Uh, another nice feature in Data Wrapper is it gives you the options to do various languages. Um, first row is always the label um, at the top. Always make sure that's selected. Any data set you roll in should always be labeled at the top. Hit proceed. And this main interface has four tabs in it. Type of chart, and it guessed right here. It guesses what uh, it thinks would be the right uh, type of chart. And yes, line chart, but you can choose many others. You know, maybe it brought this in as a pie chart, and you're like, no, I want it as you know, scatter plot or whatever. Uh, you can also select table. Uh, and make it a, just a raw data table. Um, you can check for colorblindness down here, um, different versions. Uh, you can also look at it as a uh, mobile uh, tablet or desktop laptop format. So you can do some checking there to make sure it's mobile responsive anyway, but it, you know, if you wanna see what it looks like. Um, sometimes that causes you to change the different type of chart you wanna use. Refine uh, allows you to go in and really uh, adjust your x-axis, which you notice here just says 2020. Um, you can add and uh, subtract grid lines, uh, really make the adjustments to the inner workings of the chart itself here. And I'll walk you through all this in just a minute. Um, annotations allows you to add headlines, a description, notes, uh, uh, your byline down here as well. Um, you can add little annotations, like if I wanted to add a little note up here saying, you know, number of Latino cases, you know, peaked at 506 on this date. I could do that, add little annotations in. Uh, you can also highlight uh, uh, range highlights, uh, you know, so you can shade in some of these uh, areas as well. Uh, so you do the bulk of your design during refine and annotate. And then design at the end, you can just adjust the templates. I always go with the default data wrapper uh, is it's very clean. It also gives you the option to enable social sharing, which I always encourage. Uh, if you're going to embed it, especially, it allows people to share the chart right out of your page in Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Um, so I always have that activated. So let's go back to the Refine tab here. Uh, and notice our x-axis is act, acting a little funny here. Um, it can allows you to uh, choose you know, what uh, category on your spreadsheet you want to have uh, your horizontal axis uh, running off of. And we want it to run off the date down here, obviously. But go to Tick Format. Tick format allows you to select different formats for the dates at the bottom. So I'm going to go to April, May 15 and see how that looks. That's pretty good. It gives me the dates. And as I hover over them, I can see the individual dates day by day. I can also try this one at the bottom where it gives me more detail. That one might be a little better. Still highlights the month for each one. 
So that looks pretty good to me. Um, also, you can adjust your vertical access. Uh, you know, not so bad here as we're dealing with hundreds, but if you're dealing with millions and thousands, uh, sometimes that format or uh, percentages, you might need to adjust this over here. It's good to adjust it here. You can customize the color. If I want to go to a different color panel, I can do that. And be careful with selecting colors too, you know, too much red and things like that, especially when you're dealing with homicides, deaths, things like that. Um, you can customize the colors. Uh, you can adjust each line uh, to be a different color if you wanted to. Um, you know, so you could do red, blue, yellow, and so on. Um, you can uh, adjust the labeling, again, the number format like this. Any symbols, or if you want to fill in the area between the lines if you're doing a shaded uh, area chart, uh, you can do that here. But it gives you a lot of controls on this page just to handle the part that's within the basic grid area. Now let's move to annotate. Um, we're going to add here our headline. Um, And I did Chicago COVID-19 positive cases by ethnicity and then a description. Um, uh, I'll say it tracks uh, March 6th through June 1. I could put more detail in here. Uh, I could put any notations I think I need to add down here at the bottom. Um, but I really want to get in there. Chicago Department of Public Health. I would also accept the, you know, the uh, COVID-19 data from the city of Chicago data portal. You know, you could put city data portal on there. But I'd like to be really specific because the data portal is pulling this in from the Chicago Department of Public Health. And now that I've added that, you can see the source down at the bottom has a hot link to it. Get the data so people can actually pull your spreadsheet out of here. You also want to add your byline in there. Turn. And now it's got chart byline at the bottom there. You can add it up top if you wanted to. Um, you can also add in any annotations at this level as well. Uh, highlight uh, uh, certain ranges or certain uh, bars. Maybe if you're doing a bar chart, you wanted to highlight uh, you know uh, this data that's peaks. Uh, you could do that in there and just select you know the, by date which one you wanted to highlight. You know this one doesn't really merit that. Now we're Closing in toward the end, here's some different formats, um, uh, different data wrapper uh, formats. I would steer away from page flow, uh, which is kind of a funky design. Um, it's all right, uh, but you know, it's got that dark background. Um, and there's high contrast um, versions, um, you know, data wrapper embed versions uh, in different formats that you have here. Uh, you know, just the basic data wrapper or uh, data wrapper with data um, is, is a good format. Um, uh, and uh, it also, uh, if you choose the uh, embed version, uh, it adds a little button down here that allows people uh, to embed your uh, graphic. If you don't want them to do that, don't, don't choose that embed option. Um, uh, I always choose with data or the basic data wrapper one, um, just so people can pull the data set. I don't necessarily want them stealing my chart. They can share it if they want to, but not necessarily stealing it. Um, you notice it changed width there as I moved it around. Uh, it is responsive, you know, so it'll uh, adjust width and, and height. Um, once you have this looking uh, how you want it, hit the publish button and you can hit publish chart, make it live on the web. You can download it as a PNG file here um, if you want to uh, download the, the image. I'll hit publish chart. Um, it'll give you a republish option here if I've made some changes to it maybe later on and I've already embedded it somewhere. This gives me the iframe responsive embed code or if you just want a basic iframe without the squishiness to it, um, you can hit copy. Um, and here's the link if you want it full screen. You can see what your chart looks like big time here. And you know, this is a very telling graphic. The Latino population in Chicago was hit extremely hard by uh, COVID-19. So is the African American community. Um, Another thing to note in this, and always, I always look and challenge my data, um, is cases unknown. Um, there are a lot of unknown cases that were no one selected race or ethnicity on the patient uh, or the tests uh, uh, box. Um, so, you know, 
I always put that data in. Some people remove this data, but I always include it uh, because it shows that you know most of these numbers are going to actually be much higher if they would have had the full data set. And I think that's good for clarity uh, and again for truth telling uh, with data sets. So that's the basics of Data Wrapper and all the fabulous things you can do with it. Uh, we'll probably have another video up soon uh, on uh, Data Wrapper mapping. Um, but this is the basic charts. You'll be able to find this uh, link to this data set uh, and also to Data Wrapper uh, in the uh, comments section on our YouTube channel uh, right underneath this video. So that's all we had for now. Uh, again, take advantage of uh, journalstoolbox.org. Um, we have a newsletter out here that you can sign up for and also uh, our uh, training channel where you found this video. Uh, we have uh, 25 videos out here uh, on training you on all kinds of data visualization tools and, and productivity tools. So take advantage of those tools and we'll see you next time.